Yellow, ladies and gentlemen, I asked on my Discord what we wanted the next video to be, and the vote was for getting an obsidian farm that is using a lava. So let's get to it. So you may be asking yourself, you know, why bother with obsidian farming for lava? You can just do it renewable using the end platform in the end. There are even some methods that use the end pillars or nether portals. Uh, well, there are a couple of reasons. First reason, you might be on a server that actually doesn't allow players to build machines at the main end platform or the main end island. Um, because there is only one end island and one end platform. Um, a lot of times if you're on servers, especially if they're not community servers, but they're more individual based like economy servers, um, they just aren't going to let their players build those machines there. So we can't use those things. So if that's the case, then the next option usually would be one of the wither obsidian farming methods. And yes, we are going to use one method in here that does use a wither. You may have seen that in the thumbnail. Um, but this is not based around any of your standard wither cages because there are some servers that some of the plugins they have kind of invalidate some of those wither cages. So we're going to show three different designs. There are two by me and one by El Mango. Um, thanks to El Mango for letting me use his design in here. And uh, I'll talk about it, why we're going to use his in just a moment here. But all of these are going to be using lava to generate our obsidian for us. For those of you that didn't know, if you put lava down next to water, it creates obsidian. And it will do the same thing if you put it next to a waterlogged block. At this point, you have two options to collect this obsidian block. Either you mine it as a player or use a wither to actually break it for you. Since obsidian is both blast proof and push proof, um, we can't push it into a blast chamber and push it when it's block 36 like we would with uh, ancient debris or something like that. So that's the two methods we have to do this with. When you load up the world download, this is what you're going to see. We have uh, one design. This is just the same design, just extended a little bit that is meant for using with carpet bots. So this is one of my designs. However, the player will not be able to use this and we'll talk about why in a little bit. But if you don't have a server with carpet bots, you don't have single player with carpet bots, then this is El Mango's version. This is meant to work only with players. So this one doesn't work with carpet bots, but only with players. Both of these are going to use the same method where we're going to be farming lava into cauldrons. And then you're going to bucket it out and put it next to some water. And that's going to then actually create the obsidian. And then the player stops to mine that. So I'm not going to go too in depth into Mango's version. I believe this was actually done by both Mango and Pixels. They worked on this together. Um, I will link to his video down in the description. You go check that out. The only changes I made to this were I added on uh, the mending module here to get mending on your tool so that you could run this infinitely. And then also um, added that beacon on there for the regen. Otherwise, this is completely their farm design. You can see I didn't even change it away from white concrete over to yellow concrete like you would expect on a strong video. Um, but yeah, if you want to know this one and you want to do it as a player, go check out El Mango's video. He also has a world download of this, but this will be included in the world download here. But if you want the explanation for how his works and how you use it, make sure to go check out his video. So that leaves us with the carpet bot version and the end version. Now, the end version is going to be on any end gateway out in the end. So usually those servers that have those restrictions of no main end island builds, you can go you know somewhere else out in the end and build. But we're going to go over this one first. I'm just going to review this machine. You can look at this one. It's just one that doesn't have a larger extension of the lava cauldrons. So you're going to get slightly less rates because the lava cauldrons take forever to actually random tick and fill up. So I have little notes here to remind you what you got to do, but what we're going to do is we're going to spawn the bot right on top of this hopper, looking at that target block. That target block doesn't actually do anything. It's just used for us to aim the bot. So first I'm going to spawn him in. I'm going to then put him in survival. And then we want to make sure to give him a mending pickaxe. In this case, we don't have efficiency on here, and we'll, we'll talk about why in just a moment. But if we use efficiency, he's going to break some stuff. And we also need to start out his inventory with some buckets. So here I'm going to toss the buckets on the ground. We need those to get into his offhand. So he's going to pick those up and then I'm going to do player obby swap hands. Now those are going to go over into his offhand and then we can throw that on the ground. He'll pick that up next. So now in his offhand, he has the buckets In his main hand, he has a pick. And then we just need to fill up the bots inventory. If you don't have access to do that with creative commands, all you need to do is just throw items on the ground to fill up his inventory after you've gotten those in his main hand and his off hand. So you can use anything you want. You could use, uh, you know, named iron nuggets that are all named differently. If you want to save some resources, you could throw boats at him, unstackable items like wooden shovels, however you want to do that. You just want to make sure you fill up his inventory. Now what's going to happen is these cauldrons filled with lava are going to be pushed in front of the bot. 
And then the bot is going to bucket out the lava. Then we're going to shoot out the lava right down here next to this water to turn into obsidian. And because of that angle that we were looking at, he's going to see the obsidian block here and mine that. The reason we can't do this with a player and why El Mango's setup was different is because the carpet bots have a different priority on their use and attack than a player does. And especially if you're on a server and you don't have the optimal MSPT, this is really going to be an issue because then the player is going to, instead of bucketing something, try and start mining it and either break the cauldron or not bucket the cauldron. But with a carpet bot, we can push this past him really fast and he's still going to be able to pick it up even faster than a player would be able to. So first step is going to be attack continuous. And then we also want to do use continuous. And all we have to do is come over here and flip on the farm. Our clock is going to kick in and it's going to push that lava bucket past him. It will get then sucked up by the hopper because I'll throw it out. And then the dispenser is going to dispense the lava next to the water. And there we go. So this will just, uh, just keep going in that loop. We have the system here to extend the push limit so we can push beyond the 12 block push limit that pistons normally have. And then there's this system right here using uh, droppers and comparators to move an item along this line one at a time. And this is what you would normally see as just a, a block conveyor that would go in a line. But in this case, we just want to push one at a time because we do need to wait then for him to be able to actually, uh, the bot, excuse me, to be actually able to break that obsidian. And then when it gets broken, we just have it fall down into a hopper line. You can put whatever kind of storage you want here. And then we suck the empty buckets out with an item filter and recycle those back to the player. So we have this dropper right here that spits out a bucket to the um, bot every time it actually buckets something up. I did add the mending module on here, not the full module without the blocks because you saw the speed at which we're breaking those blocks. We have quite a bit of a break, but that's plenty uh, mending to make sure that we never lose that pickaxe. And then we also have a regen beacon here so that the bot never dies of starvation. So you can set this up, you know, probably actually, you know, encase your bot inside of a little safety mechanism there. This should be unspawnable in here, um, but just make sure your bot doesn't get attacked and then this could run infinitely. So uh, El Mango's, I believe he said, was going to run at about 450 obsidian per hour. This is about 380 obsidian per hour, so it's a little bit less. But again, um, his has the disadvantage that you can't use a carpet bot. Mine has the disadvantage you can't use a player. So that's why I asked Mango if I could include this in here, because then we had an option for both. Whether you had carpet bots or whether you could only use players, you've got one option to go to here. The final option I'll cover down in here, we're looking at about 5,800 obsidian per hour. Like I said, it is in the end, but it is not on the main end island. You could do this at any end gateway. So we're just going to go through to the end. I've included that in the world download here. Use this command block to get us out to the end gateway that I've chosen. And there we go. There's our system. So you can see we've greatly increased the size of the lava farm here. That's because even though a system like this, so I've included this one here if you want to do a smaller version, this will still include a lot of lava in those uh, cauldrons by the time it gets to the player. Um, this is, by the way, both player or bot friendly. But it's not going to be guaranteed to be filled up. So you're still going to see lower rates. This is, um, if I remember correctly, running this was about 1800 per hour. Um, so you're not looking at that great of rates from this because just because the lava doesn't fill up as much. So here we're using the same systems to extend the push limit. Um, this is actually originally designed that I made for a powdered snow farm. We've converted over here to use for lava. So we just have all these cauldrons get uh, snaked around in this system. And I'm going to turn sounds down here. All these cauldrons get snaked around, so they start over here, they get pushed down, and then pushed that way. And then each row, they snake back, snake back, snake back, until you get right over here, where it's going to pass in front of our player or bot. And then it continues to snake until it gets all the way over here, where it then gets pushed up. And then each time over here, we push it over and down, over and down, over and down, until it starts again over in the cycle. So it has all that time under all these pointed dripstone to get optimally filled. So you're looking at about 98% of your cauldrons being filled with lava by the time it gets over to the player. Then we are using this end gateway as a wither cage to contain our wither. And we're using this golem to distract him so it doesn't shoot out any blue skulls. And then we can dispense the obsidian under here. And then use snowballs to actually aggro him to, uh, to his block breaking algorithm. And that's why the last video I uploaded was that um, snowball farm, because I needed to find a way to actually get those snowballs refilled. I didn't want to have it where you had to just fill it with a limited amount of snowballs. I wanted this to be an infinite farm. Um, so here we're generating our own snowballs to hit the wither with. Then whatever lava we bucket out gets sent down this line into those dispensers. And then all the empty buckets and the obsidian gets sent back here 
or they get batched, the obsidian gets collected, and the buckets get put back into recycling. So I'll set this one up with a bot, but you can do this again as a player or a bot. So we're going to come up our ladder. You stand inside this waterway on top of that trap door, and then looking just in between the chest and that block right there. We're just using the chest so we have a little bit of gap there so that the buckets that get thrown up still fall back down. They don't land on a ledge or anything. So we're going to look right there. And if you were doing this as a player, again, this is the point at which you would fill your inventory. So then you would fill up your inventory except for one slot where you have the buckets. As a player, you can do this with this many nuggets. As a bot, you would have to make sure that you completely fill their inventory because those items would stack with each other. Um, and then you're just going to, like I said, stand here and look inside that little crack. You want to make sure that your inventory is filled up so that when you actually bucket out lava from one of these, it throws the lava bucket out of your inventory down into the water stream here. So here I have my bot that just has the bucket and the rest of the inventory filled up. And then we're going to do that use continuous command. Again, if you're a player, you would just hold down on your right mouse click button. You could do that either through tweakaroo or if you hold down your left mouse button and then press F3 and T and let go of your mouse. That'll now consider you as holding the right mouse button when it reloads back up. So now our bot is ready to bucket and then we just have to turn this on again if you're doing this as a player you would just turn it on and then go up the ladder and get into position if you're doing this as a bot you can get the bot set up first and then turn it on uh, we do have a little bit of a pulse extender here just to stabilize to make sure that you're not uh, no one comes along and spams the output because these block conveyors are really sensitive but then what we're going to see when it kicks in and we can see those are going to get bucketed out as they pass the player one thing to note is in order to make this usable for a player and not just a bot, we had to actually slow down each of these conveyors throughout the whole system um, to the three tick repeaters instead of the two tick repeaters. A carpet bot could actually handle the two tick repeaters, in which case we need to make some changes down there to be able to handle it. Um, so I just left it like this so that you can do it with either a player or a bot. Then we can see those lava buckets are going to come in here. They get pulled up into the hoppers and then they get dispensed out of here. We have this clock that is then going to shoot out a snowball at the wither's tail right there. He'll do his little uh, break on the blocks, and then we'll get those obsidian coming into those hoppers and then put down to this item stream as well. One thing, we have kind of a weird auto dropper here, but it's because we need to make sure that that snow golem doesn't think he has a place that he can pathfind to. Um, so if we do kind of the normal system, there are blocks up here, and the snow golem eventually just jumps off. He's like, nope, I'm done. I'm out of here. Um, so yeah, we want to make sure we keep them there. So we have this surrounded here to make sure he can't walk off over there. And like I said, we can see it comes in, it gets bashed a little bit, and then the buckets get launched back into that stream where they'll get shot next to the player so that the player can restock on their buckets. And we need to make sure that we're keeping up with that because we do have 12 of them passing at the same time. This might be a little bit overkill, but this way we can always make sure that even if there's a little hiccup or something, the player always still has the empty buckets in their inventory. So this is very similar to the system that I used in that snowball video I just uploaded. And this is what I actually needed that system before that I mentioned. Um, you'll notice that the clock is a little bit slower here. So we have one repeater on two ticks and one on three ticks. The reason being is because as that new obsidian comes out, I didn't want to have the chance of anything um, like knocking the previous one that got broken out by having it on the same tick. So that's why we've slowed it down a little bit. But we have the same system where if we look here at the uh, eyesight of that wither, he is just stuck on that golem, wants to shoot that golem, but none of his uh, heads are actually able to get out. But since he's able to successfully launch them, he doesn't launch any blue skulls. So we've got a nice little wither cage here that's nice and easy. And as long as you don't break this wall right here, this wither cage will work on any server because this wall is pushing him up by that half a block that we see there. And then these pieces of bedrock on the side prevent him from moving out. And there's no way, not even if he does launch a blue skull because you, I don't know, come along and punch him in the face for some reason because you're a weirdo like that. He's still going to be stuck inside here as long as you don't break that wall. So like I said, I'm going to leave this system in here. If you don't want to go through this much build effort, um, you're still going to get a decent amount of obsidian through this method, but it is significantly lower. You're looking at that between 12 to 1800 range, whereas this you're looking at the 5800 range. And then one thing to note is in this design right here, I have just lit up the main end platform so that no Endermen can spawn. Um, if you don't want to do that where you're lighting up absolutely every single spot, you need to make sure Endermen can't get to the system over here. Um, so then I would recommend covering this area with water then so that even if they do spawn, they can't TP to the area. So that's going to be it. That's a couple of methods you can use to get some obsidian farming done. If you don't have access to the main end platform, um, either on your server or your single player, maybe you've got a different project you did on a single player and just can't spot a way to fit that in. Um, by all means, these are also viable options. 
I do want to address one thing real quick, and that is um, I know that people in the past have requested some Black Life Black tutorials. Um, I do prefer to go with the world download in the video description because that gives you the opportunity. Um, if you don't want to follow Black Life Black tutorial, you can just download the world and see how it's working. Just test out these concepts for yourself if you're not built, planning to build an exact copy of it. Or if you do want to build an exact copy of it, I do have a guide on my channel on how you can install and use Lightmatica to grab a schematic. And that will basically give you a Black Life Black tutorial. Just need to make sure if there are certain setup steps that you take a look at those. I did have someone recently call me lazy for not doing block by block tutorials. Uh, this is something I do in my spare time. I have a full-time job. I have a wife that I enjoy spending time with, and I'd rather not have that time cut into it. So um, unfortunately, block by block tutorials are just not something that's going to get done on this channel a lot. And that's why I like to stick with the world download, because um, it saves a lot of time in producing these videos. I can get out more content to you. And then, like I said, you have better options. You can just come in right away and start testing this without having to follow it uh, along. Um, or you can grab your own schematic for these. I highly recommend you check out Lightmatica if you're not familiar with what that is. So not to end that on a salty note of the person who called me lazy for not doing that, um, but I just wanted to give a quick explanation of why you don't see a lot of Black by Blacks on my channel. So I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye.